So the plan is to, to make one session out of Just characters. Okay. <laughs> so, so you said that you don't really write uh, treatments, but sometimes you do write outlines. <coughs> How, how, does, how does your outline look like? Um, it's, it's very short, my outlines, when I do them. I don't do them often. Um, the, uh, the, you know, what I did, 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 I try to do the one, two, three act outline very, very quickly in terms of, I, if I have a bunch of character notes, you know, that are like seven, eight pages long, um, the the plot outline is two pages, and it goes one, two, three in terms of the act. And I try to indicate there with very short sentences what goes into those acts. Um, the so as you see, the the character notes weigh much more heavily than a than a than a plot outline. Um, the uh, if I make it too detailed then I'm afraid I'm going to rob myself of my own spontaneity in terms of writing it. <clears throat> okay, so you basically follow the, the three-act structure. My, my. So what do you think a strong structure looks like? What do I think of what? A strong structure looks like. Is it, is it that important, structure for scripts? Um, no. They, 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 what, what's important is how good the movie is, the structure. <laughs> <laughs> it's there to ignore. If, if I want, you know, if I get in trouble, it's really what it is. If, it is. if I'm swimming and if I'm troubled and I'm screwed up and I don't know what's happening, then I go back to these pages. And then I go back to the character outline and, and to, the, to the outline of the, the, the structure outline that I have. But if I'm not having trouble, then I, then I do ignore it, you know, and I just keep writing. So how do you build exciting characters or engaging characters. What's the secret of a strong character? What makes them a strong character? Yes. Uh, complexity. Um, what they want to do, what they really are instead of how they pretend to be. And I think that's a real focus, focal point of a drama, is we're stripping away the pretenses as we go along. And then we see the exposed character, hopefully at the end, or we see glimpses of the real character at the end, so that we can see this process of of shedding, you know. And because uh, I think, you know, as human beings, we tend to put up a lot of fronts and and um, and pretend to a lot of things that we're not. And in the course of that drama, I like I like to shed the characters of those things. Um, <clears throat> fascination is really important, and it's, it's a word that's not used often in, in today in structure discussions or character discussions, but we have to be fascinated in the world that we show up on screen. I don't believe that we need, that, we, that, our, that the characters have to be clearly good or evil. I like ambiguity a lot, because I think we are all made up of good parts and bad parts, and the, the and I, I think the, our humanity is reflected in that complexity between the two parts. One of the things I loathe about television and dislike a lot in movies is that they have a tendency to create characters that you can really root for. You know, you're rooting like you're rooting for a football team. I mean, this is Prodi, this character, and you're rooting for Prodi. Well, that's bullshit. You know, it's a, it's one is a sport and the other is drum, right? And the, but, but Hollywood really says, well, how can we root for this person? Well, I will argue with you that in basic instinct, you weren't really rooting for anybody. You weren't rooting for Sharon, and I don't think you were rooting for Michael, right? Yet the movie was a gigantic hit, and, and you didn't need to root for everyone. But it was a fascinating world. The, the characters were complex, and the, and, that was good enough for the public. The public didn't need anyone, you know. The, the other thing that I hate that they do today is a lot, and this is television's influence, is that you have a main character, and um, the main character um, is, you know, doing something good and heroic, but in parentheses, well, you know, she 
um, you know, one has a, some kind of psychological issue that and she's constantly at war with her own psychology and with her heroism. You know, it's almost as bad as the, the, the cliche where somebody's doing something bad and, you know, we find out that they were abused as children and, you know, and Papa had sex with the girl and all this, this stuff, you know, and that's made up drama. And it's not real, I don't think that's real stuff. I, you know, did I, it's not easy in Hollywood to, to write things that they make that are about people who, that you can't root for, right? Um, that, that, that they feel they can't root for. Um, but my argument is that you don't need to do that. You know, if, if, the, if, the, if the drama is strong enough, complex enough, and if the, and if the characters are interesting enough, fascinating enough that you don't have to draw clear lines and, you know, and turn it all into Prodi, you know, it's, you don't have to do that. Do, uh, does the uh, characters have to change, have to Im well, evolve? Then, maybe, and then that's a very common thing in, in, uh, in drama, of course, that they always urge, you know, is that you have to show an arc of it begins here and then the character goes here. I don't think that's necessarily true, you know, it's, it's, we, we see it all the time, and it's certainly a, a cliche of, of modern dramaturgy. But I don't think that's necessarily true. You know, the, uh, the if, especially if you're writing about a, a dark or evil character, you know, um, and I, the argument I would make is that if, if there is a character like that, um, that, that, that that character may have been, probably was evil or dark, from the beginning or very early in his life, right? Um, the, uh, now you may show, it, it would be interesting to show variations of that evil, you know, in, 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 in what they do. Um, in uh, Music Box, the dad um, was, was evil and, and ugly and, uh, and did horrible things. Um, and, and, and then for the rest of his life denied that he had done those things. And the, the game was, to, the, the, the game that I referred to in the movie was to show and expose, to strip him of his pretenses and to show, finally improve that kind of evil and see how the daughter reacted to it. But there was no real change there you know, from, from one to the other. I, I, I'm suspicious of dramaturgical rules, you know, and, and, and cliches. Um, and. I think really original pieces of work get around that, you know. Who is your favorite character you created? Well, obviously, I'm surprised you asked me the question. Obviously, the character in Showgirls named Nomi Malone, named <laughs> after my wife, you know, is the favorite. Well, I'm not sure my wife will ever forgive me for creating a character named after her in Showgirls, you know, but. Uh, but uh, obviously that's the one. I, it's very tough to choose. You know, they're all children, you know, um, and um, the, I think there's a natural tendency to go with the, with the ones that were in hit movies, right? If I said, well, my very favorite character is, you know, some, is in Nowhere to Run, um, you know, the, the, that was directed by the director I tried to kill but failed, then that wouldn't really ring well. It's tough to pick. I, I like basic. I like Nick Curran and and shared a lot. Um, the uh, the uh, I like Jessica Lang very much in Music Box. Um, I like the, the, the both of the people in Children of Glory a lot. I think that they have a lot of character and a lot of stuff. So, but it, it's really an impossible question. And who's your favorite from from any other movie you have seen? Um, you mean what was my favorite movie of all time? No, the favorite character. Um, you know, um, I don't like to play those games. I, I always forget. Um, and then and an hour later I think, oh shit, I should have said this movie or that director or that character. And with my advancing age, I really mistrust myself answering that stuff. I have a tendency to piss off friends of mine who say, you prick, why didn't you mention me as, you know, and all of that stuff, you know. So I've made en enough enemies put that adding more and more with casual questions. So thank you very much, but I'm not going to answer that. Very much. <laughs>
And can you give us a little insight of how do you give names to your characters? Names of the people. Well, honestly, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the answer to Sharon. I'm, I, and I did this for luck, essentially, is I'm a, I love baseball. I played a lot when I was a boy. And, uh, and I still watch it with my sons. And, and, uh, and even Naomi condescends occasionally to watch a game with us. Um, so I've named a lot of characters after baseball players. You know, and, and no one, no one really knew that. You know, but but I, you know, I've actually named some after my favorite players. The funniest name that I did was I it, we used to work for a newspaper run by a man named Thomas Vale, and and of course he got pissed off at me after a while and fired me. Right, this was before I was a screenwriter. And then about ten years or so later, I became a screenwriter and I named the villain Thomas Vale. The piece, right. Well, I didn't know that movie companies hired insurance companies who tracked all the names in the script, exactly to get away from some idiot like me who named some guy as a villain, right? So one day I said, one day I get this note from the insurance company and said, you can't use this name for this character. And I said, why? And then the answer was, because you worked for this man 10 years ago and he fired you, that's why. You know? So um, sometimes, you know, the... Uh, the, the, the name Nick Curran, for example, in Basic Instinct, I saw him as, as a kind of Irish cop, right? I've been even exposed to Irish cops a lot, and in his style he was Irish, I thought. And, and Nicholas, I just thought, sounded good to the ear. But one of the things with, uh, with movie names is that you're naming them for the ear as much as you are for anything else. It has to have a nice sound on screen. And the sound, in some ways, defines the character. So I thought Nick Curran fit, you know, fit this particular, this particular guy. I'm sorry to say that there was no baseball player named Curran, but I screwed up, you know. So. <laughs> so you you wrote about real life events, real events. Uh, is it real events and real characters? more difficult or easier to fit into a structure? Is writing about my life more difficult? No, I mean, if you, if you write a script based on a real story or based on a real person. Well, I'm not sure I've done that. No? You know, I'm not sure I've, I've based it on a real person. Are you, do you mean the autobiographical stuff like Telling Lies in America, which in a fictional way is about me? Yes. It's not more difficult to structure. Um, it's more difficult to be honest completely and to write about the char that character who may be me with all of its foibles. Um, I haven't had problems that way because even in my books where I'm writing about myself, I write about myself very honestly. And, and, uh, and some people say that the person I'm most critical about in my books is me. But I really believe that we're all human um, the, we all make mistakes. I've certainly made my share of them, and I'm quite proud of my humanity. You know, <laughs> that, that, um, I don't set myself up as a saint. I never have. You know, so and, and, and yeah, I'm human. So I write about myself that way, as I write about other people. So when you write uh, your supporting characters, how do you orchestrate them? How do you decide whether it's there are too many of them or too few? Who to kill off? Who to keep alive? Um, the, the piece seems to define whether it's an, an ensemble piece with a lot of characters or whether it's a main central character focus piece. Um, the, if it's an ensemble piece, you have freedom and room for all kinds of characters. But if it's a, if it's a hero focused or a leading person focused or the two of them, then you really don't have all of that kind of room. You have to, you have, to have some to make it interesting. It, you can't it can't be just the two people unless you do something as outrageous as one night stand where they're in, having sex and talking all night, right? I mean, it, but it's very rare to do that. Um, so it defines itself in my mind as it goes along. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm finished and I do a second draft, sometimes, let me rephrase it, sometimes when I do a first draft and I'm just hurrying to get it written, um, I focus completely on the main characters, and I go back in the second draft, flesh it out, make the secondary characters more prominent. 
um, and make them more relevant to the to the main action that's going on between the two central characters. <laughs>